Hey, uh, it's Charlie. I um, am making this video in response to DeGogo's Cold Fusion video about quantum teleportation. Um, DeGogo, I love the channel, huge fan, um, but there are some minor errors and there's actually a major error in the video in your conceptualization about entanglement, um, and I can't not make the video. Uh, absolutely love what you do. You historically contextualize technology in a way that I don't see anywhere else on YouTube, but um, I can't, uh, we gotta, uh, the, I know that you would want to know if you had got something wrong. I, in the history. I don't have a PhD in this or anything, but I'm a grad student at NYU. I study philosophy of physics and I study bioethics, which means I think about quantum mechanics a lot and I'm, I've been thinking about entanglement for a long time and I've been doing lots of research um, about it. I watched the video uh, and I thought that I heard a bunch of things wrong. I went back again to look again and I want to read a couple of quotes that um, uh, uh, that, uh, that are important. First, Minor, um, you said the idea remained a theory and was only speculated to be possible in the 1990s around 530, you say this? Um, no, it was actually uh, speculated um, and it was first proven in 1950 five-ish by John Bell. Um, Bell's inequalities uh, first theoretically proved this was possible, and then Alan Aspey and his theoretical team, they got it uh, experimentally proven as early as the 70s. So it was not like, this isn't a totally recent thing. It's not like, oh my god, we just figured it out. There is something recent, which is China smashed the distance record, but them smashing the distance record is actually not, it's not conceptually new. It's not anything new about how quantum mechanics um, works. We've already understood the concepts behind that. Um, that's just a more, uh, a stronger, more powerful technological implementation of that. That's a minor note. That's not that important, but I wanted to say it all the same because I know that you like history. <sighs> okay, second um, and major. Two quotes first, and then we'll talk about why. Uh, you said at around 3.30, quote, because quantum entanglement works at any distance and instantly the actual information transmitted between the two particles travels faster than the speed of light. This has been known for many decades, close quote. Then later at 728, you say this technology could also be used to build networks that are instantaneous and much faster than anything that we could build today. That's around 730. Wrong. That's, that's the big thing that's wrong about this. Um, I don't know that it's entirely your fault. I saw that you were reading Polkinghorn. Polkinghorn's great as a way to get into this stuff, um, but the idea, and I also think some of the headlines that you quoted might not be your fault either because a lot of these media headlines are saying um, teleportation, 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 and the implication of the word teleportation is that you can move information from one spot to the other. Quantum teleportation makes it sound like you can just move a piece of information from one spot to the other, and how can you do that? Well, you can do it because of entanglement. Your explanation of entanglement is actually pretty spot on. It's just your application of entanglement that leads you to the idea that information could move faster than the speed of light, which is the problem. Okay, I said that in a lot of words. Um, I don't wanna just be like, rah, it's wrong, and then walk away. I wanna kinda give you a little sense of um, why it's wrong and uh, why it's a problem. So uh, we're gonna do that right now. In your explanation of the video, you say that um, these particles are connected somehow. Yes, they're connected somehow. There is a massive scholarly debate about exactly how they're connected and what does it mean they're connected and how what occurs when we're watching them. That's not resolved. Um, there are lots of interpretations of what's really going on there, and, and that's probably not going to be resolved. It could be, but it's not going to be resolved anytime soon. Um, if you want to look at more of that, just straight Google interpretations of quantum theory, many worlds interpretation, Copenhagen interpretation, um, Bohm, Kibberley Bohm wave, there's all these different theories about what's really happening there. That's orthogonal to what we're talking about right now, but what matters is um, your main misconception is that you think information can travel faster than light because of quantum entanglement, um, because of the interaction. Um, and you say earlier, I don't have the timestamp for this one, you say still interacting despite the large differences. Um, that's also not correct. Interacting is like a fuzzy word and exactly what you mean there. Um, it, you have to be very precise when you're, when you're talking about this. So uh, an alarm just went off and set up. Okay. What you got right is that um, there is an interaction, a connection between these two particles. What you, you quoted Einstein's famous spooky action at a distance. And then you explained that concept pretty well. Um, 
say you've got a photon and you and you entangle some photons in a satellite and you send one to you and one to me if I measure one to be one the other one has to be zero in terms of its spin spot on correct the problem is and you also said that that um, that connection whatever that is that, that that interaction is instantaneous and faster than light also correct it is instantaneous and it is faster than light but what that does not mean is that you can make an internet that is faster than our current internet you cannot make a faster than light internet out of quantum entanglement that's the major misconception that I had to make a video about um, and uh, why is that the reason why that is is because you are 100% certain boom boom that one is the opposite of the other if you were in Australia and you measured boom up, you would know I had down. And so when you're looking at it from the outside, you can think, oh, he, every time he says up, I get it down. And then we can talk to each other because he says down, down, down. And I get up, 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 down, down, up, up, and then up, up, down, down. We, get, we can send codes back and forth and we can build an internet on this principle. But the problem is when you're uh, observing or measuring air quotes for that because debate, but the, when you're observing a system, uh, you don't actually get to choose whether it's up or whether it's down. If you look at a set of entangled photons, it might be up and it might be down, and there's no way in advance for you to know whether or not it's going to be one or the other. So the precise way to talk about this is that there, even though there is an entanglement, there's a spooky connection between the two um, photons, there's, there's no causal connection between the two parties. So if I have a photon in Australia and a photon in the US, I cannot call you on a quantum internet phone and say, hey, um, let's talk at faster than the speed of light. That is not physically possible as of right now. Um, and you quoted Wikipedia, I've got the page up right now, you put a screenshot up of the Wikipedia quantum teleportation thing. Quantum teleportation is like kind of a, a misnomer, but um, in this context. so. You said you threw this up, and it says, "I'm going to read it right now." The process by which quantum information can be transmitted, exactly in principle, from one location to the other. Okay, but then, comma, with the help of classical communication and previously shared quantum entanglement. So that's the kicker. Since it's random, since I don't know which way is up and which way is down, I need to communicate with you classically about whether it was up and whether it was down and that happens at slower than the speed of light so if you scroll down into this article in protocol there's this section that you can read this yourself like epr pair is generated um third second step third step uh using a classical channel the two bits are sent from a to b this is the only potentially time consuming step as due to speed of light considerations so uh even in the sources that you're using it's pointing out you cannot transmit information faster than light. Causality does not occur faster than light. There's some really good PBS space time videos actually online that could help you understand that. Um, I'll try and link it because it, it does a good job of arguing that the speed of light is really just the speed of causality itself and it doesn't make sense to say that it goes faster than that. Um, if you do, and actually I'll throw this one up as a recommendation, um, Maudlin's book, Quantum Non-Locality and Relativity, talks about some of the possibilities of what would occur if we did have causality that traveled faster than light. Um, back in times causality, uh, reverse causality, time, time reverse causality, a lot of weird things would happen. Maybe that will happen and maybe we could build the quantum internet, but as of right now, that it goes faster than the speed of light. But that is not what the science says right now. Quantum cryptography allows for a quantum secured internet, not a quantum instantaneous internet. Love the channel. Thank you so much for making all the amazing videos. Um, just wanted to put that out there uh, because 190,000 people watched it since the time I made it. And yikes. Okay, have a great day. Oh, and if you're new to this channel, um, I do philosophy and technology and science uh, videos and bioethics videos. Uh, I'm a philosophy grad student, as I said, and it's like a vlog about some of those things. There's some introductory level stuff, and then there's some super technical stuff. Just click around and see whatever you want. Bye.